Perkins, a P-Town Prince, a 17 Wall Troubadour, Uptown Renaissance man. But right now, we're on the other side of town, all the way downtown, in the lower 9th Ward, at 1317 Tupelo Street, Street, at the House of Dance and Feathers. And right now, we have the very esteemed Mr. Ronald Lewis, the curator of the House of Dance and Feathers. And I'll let you hear a little bit from Mr. Uh, Lewis. Thank you for, uh, for coming here, Chuck, because I always like to have people come here who want to continue telling our story from from 05 up to now and what it's going to take to bring our city back in the various parts of our community. What I experienced on, on the good side is how people embraced what I was doing. You know, people, uh, as I spoke on TV and things, talking about the rebuilding of my community, and how we not wasn't going to give up the land, you know. And people had something to connect to. So what they did was they started bringing items here. Like a uh, lady brought a washboard to me that came from a man who was 96 years old. Oh, wow. You know, uh, one of my grandchildren, uncle, uh, those cold drinks and bleach bottles over there, he dug them up at Audubon Park doing some excavating oh, okay. and and you know they got many moons on them so so people just feel that this is ours you know we 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 got something to reckon con connect to right and you know i just use that as as keeping that message out there about the rebuilding of, of the lower nine and how we had near 70 percent home ownership down here and when the heard word when the world heard about it they said, well, that many black people own homes? <laughs> right. <laughs> and we said, yes. You know, our people came off of these sugar cane plantations and came out of these cotton fields, and they bought land in the big city of New Orleans. Very cheap. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, and they brought a quality of life down here that was different from across the city. And from that point on, I'm a product of this. And this is why I proudly say that our community going to rebuild one house and one family at a time. And I use the culture, which is the fabric of our life here in the That's city right. of New Orleans, right. as the vehicle to put the other message out. We have growth. It's slow growth. But when, when everybody left here, they would look to be gone two or three days. Right. Now, gone into four years, uh, over 100,000 of our people are still not back in the city of New Orleans. So, with those who are migrating back and finding a way to rebuild their lives, are making it happen. And, you know, our, our city is, is being rebuilt off the back of the people who love this city. That's right. Not the, That's not right. the people who, who are the, the chambers of commerce or whatever, but the people who, who will go out there to the second line, the people who will go to the various festivals here in the city and just do the everyday things that we love. For my community, I always tell people it's one house and one family at a time because the Lord Night Wall was the tsunami yeah. of the United States. It was the epicenter. Well, yeah, when that water came through here, my home had 14 feet of water up to the rooftop. I lost everything that me and my wife had accumulated over that 30 plus years. I got you. And, uh, with everybody being in the same boat, we just been picking up each other, trying to make it happen. You know, Brad Pitt got his Might Make It Right program. Then they got the Global Green Project down here. And, you know, I'm even championing a cause about how they built the Musician Village over there on the old school site. So we got an old school site here in the Lower Nine, which I think Habitat would be, be a great impact if they cross this water. I got you. Yeah, and, provide, and provide affordable housing for people of this community to come back. I tell people, the streets of New Orleans talk to you. Because, you know, we live in the streets of New Orleans. We, our homes is our bedding place, but we get out of them doors every chance we get, whether it's barbecue in the yard, <laughs> yeah. five on the second line, or just going to some out of social event. And you feel that. You know, you feel the people embracing each other all the time, you know, and using these New Orleans events as a gathering oh. point. Many people come into my museum who grew up in New Orleans, 
who, who lived in the Garden District, lived in Metairie, had never been to a second right, line right. because of the social event, events. But what they tell me is when their grandparents and their parents told them about when they went to Zulu parade. <laughs> but it was something that wasn't talked about. You're right, you're right. But it was done, you know, because it, it was like being taboo. But the next generation who's coming out and they being like Columbus, you know, they didn't discover the second line. Right. And, <laughs> and now here they are. They didn't realize how, how, how wonderful. That's right. That, that yes, it's our creation, but it's a people event. With the House of Dance and Feathers, I incorporated my life of the culture from being the president of the Big Nine Sewage Pleasure Club, being a former Mardi Gras Indian thing. And I took the House of Dance and Feathers and made it a culture education center for those who want to come here and want to know the truth. Because all these cultural anthropologists and things come to New Orleans and, and they be Columbus. <laughs> we, we didn't discover the rare culture in the city of New Orleans right. that's been, been here existing. Right. And then they want to write about it and think. And fortunately, with my book that just came out, give you an insight perspective about this great culture and why we do it and why it's so embedded in our life and things. So we such on-hand people. When you see the, the streamers, as we call them, uh, the parade fans and the umbrellas and all of that, it, it, because we like to create. We like to put our hands on things and say, look at us. <laughs> and when you look at that history through the Caribbean, through Latin America, all the way back to the African coast, Every this thing just came through here. Yeah, right. You know, when when you look at the North Side Skull and Bones, you, you're looking at tradition in Haiti. Yeah. You know, you're looking at tradition in, in Africa. You know, when you look at the umbrellas, you know, of the uh, Ivory Coast, when the cheese come out of the out of the, out on a certain day and wear one color and everybody in the tribe wear that color and they make these beautiful umbrellas with uh, symbols on top that have some representation. Well, you find this right here in the city of New Orleans because we are the most African city in the United States of America. We are descendants of these people That's right. that came off of those slave ships, that brought all this food and culture and everything to the city. You know, so through that, we, you know, when, when, when these other people come here, the first thing they say, I've seen this some way. And, and, and as they go back, they realize when, when, when they was in the Caribbean and seen a uh, street festival or, 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 or the parades in Cuba, whatever, then they have that connection. I got you. And, and the connection is those boats that came through that passage here to the poor city of New Orleans. <laughs>